I'm a cinematographer, and this is my YouTube studio. Right now, I'm not thinking about the products I need to review, or lighting, or my next YouTube episode. Right now, I'm thinking about the moon, and Copernicus, and his idea the sun is the center of the universe. I'm thinking about geometry, how the radius of a circle is equal all the way around. And what if somebody built a tool based on this geometry? What would that look like? Would it be vibration free without a gimbal? What about on a long lens? What if you did time lapses? What would those look like? Oh, I know. What if this device could move really slow? What then? What happens if you sped it up? Ooh, what if it could move really fast? What would you do then? What happens if you take it outside? Is that even possible? What are the mechanics of that? I'm thinking about the next wave of content creators and how they will use this tool in ways I haven't imagined. The tech reviewers, the B-rollers, the slow-mo aficionado, the next wave of DIY creators who work in their garage building the things they love with their hands. The actors who put themselves on tape with the only camera they have. The musicians who want to give the live stream the best performance they can. And now I'm thinking just how wrong Copernicus was. The center of the universe is not the sun. The center of the universe is you. If you want it done right, you got to do it yourself. That's a proven motto for one incredibly innovative inventor and filmmaker who just wrote, directed, starred, and shot his own movie. We are talking about local actor turned artist Josh Yo. Hi, Josh. Thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. Thank you. What an honor. I think what I wanted to do was create a device that would channel my love and passion for cinematography, but also give others a tool that could maybe capture themselves in a way that they haven't seen before. But it's cool because it matches it, right? So for example, when you're getting here, most of your background is a little bit of the car and it's kind of black. Yeah. And you're like, okay, like you're in the emotion and stuff. But then when you finally, when the shot finally resolves, you're facing these city lights are in the background and the mood is also changed. So by the time you're at the other side, it's go time. Like the city's back there, there's stuff happening. Yeah, I never seen that kind of shot before. You know what I mean? That long and drawn out. So it was pretty rad just like exploring that. Um, okay, so let's just jump into the, the motor stuff. So like, I think the biggest... The Orbit is the world's first ceiling mounted motion controlled camera dolly. I mean, there's nothing even like it on the market. My name is Josh Yeo, I'm a content creator, and this is the first tool that I've made for myself that I'm bringing to market, and I'm stoked. This product in particular is such an easy one because it's just one motor, you know what I mean? It's one axis. The biggest hurdle I have is just convincing people to, to screw four screws into their ceiling. So I don't know manufacturing or logistics, and that's when I got John involved. Like the ceiling? I mean, it's not a bad idea for most people that have white ceilings, which is pretty common. Right. Uh, the black one seems like it'd be more studio-based, right? So John Himes is my college best friend, and he's probably the most capable entrepreneur I've ever met. Currently, his experience is in making fitness equipment, number one supplier of the world's largest vibrator. Probably shouldn't tell people that. Fitness equipment. Fitness equipment. So the three biggest things that I wanted when I was coming up with this, arms that were articulating, they could rotate out and accommodate a variety of different scenarios and lenses. I also wanted the motor to be capable of pretty quick speeds. Or very, very slow speeds. Wow. 
And then the last thing is I wanted it to be absolutely silent. In three years, we've come a long way. The first prototype that I made was noisy, it was clunky. I cobbled it together with a repurposed time-lapse motor, but the shots were promising. It looked interesting, and there was a whole, it just cracked open a whole bunch of creativity on what I could use this for had I put a little bit more R&D into it. Wow, it feels very lightweight. Already, I can tell you, I want these arms to be longer. And this feels, this definitely feels solid. Like the joint is really strong. I'm really impressed with the joint. But I think these teeth need to be a little bit smaller. That's probably just do some CNC uh, machining and use aluminum, make them a little higher and sturdier, better teeth engagement. So the first LED prototype that we have, the uh, the LEDs flicker. If we're gonna go better, we might as well find one with a, a better CRI. What's CRI? Color rendering index. It basically, the higher the number of the CRI, the more accurate it looks on skin tones. Right now, it's we're looking uh, just a little bit yellow. Okay, I think we can figure that out. Now, motors are not my specialty, and that's where we needed some more help. The biggest requirement, I don't know how to solve the noise issues. Am I like losing my mind here? Is that possible or is that impossible? No, no, Josh, it's hard to do. One of the big mistakes people make is they always just think motor. So yeah, you've got to have a good motor that first of all, doesn't have noisy gears. It doesn't have, uh, you know, poor build quality. It has to be really, really high quality. And then you have to have excellent electronics driving it. And this is one of the hard parts because those noises are hard to get rid of. And with motors, it's even worse. And that's when I teamed up with the guys over at Exebo. Exebo are like, the geniuses behind stealth motors. They have their own linear sliders that are super, super quiet. This could be a pretty good relationship for us, man. Like, I feel like we're, we're, we're missing pieces for each other. Right? We've had to make dead quiet drives. If you what do you guys call it? It's the stealth drive. That's yeah. what I want. Problem solved. <laughs> yeah, we can, like it's no joke. Like we can make, we can add stealth drive to orbit, no problem. Eight, seven, six, five. It's a huge selling point because what I want to use this for is not just product videography, which is fast moving, right? But also like interview stuff, which is slow moving. What's genius about the orbit is that it's so simple. It's basically a circle. That's all it's doing. It's making a perfect circle. What you can do with this has a lot of practical uses. Like for example, this camera right here on a very slow moving speed, the perfect speed for interviews. So the background is moving nice and slow and fluttery. It just switched directions. That's because I programmed it to go 45 degrees and then it's gonna stop, turn back the other way. And all of this is being done right now and it's dead quiet. It's, you can't hear it at all. We are like 90% of the way there. I've teamed up with some incredibly smart people. We've done all the heavy lifting. We've done all the prototyping that we can possibly do. And now we are that one model away from the production model, the one that we do it right and we, we clean it up and we link the app. We don't have an app and we don't have molds made, but all the other hard stuff has been figured out. This as a tool excites me because it puts more autonomy into the individuals. So now you're only limited by your own creativity. I understand this is a, an expensive piece of kit and I don't have a track record of making anything yet. So it's like you're investing in something. This is like a real honest to God Kickstarter. It has me really excited. And I'm also, I'm also a little terrified. I don't want to let you guys down. I won't let you down. You guys are probably wondering, will this fit in your room? Not everybody has a big studio like I do. The very first prototypes that I was using was in my bedroom. So if you're wondering about filming your entire closet and just all the stuff that doesn't look cool, you'd be surprised when you set a real thin depth of field, all the little light leaks and imperfections actually look beautiful and that's what you want especially when you shoot it on like a hundred millimeter macro and you blur out the background you just don't want to shoot super wide and stop down and then then basically yeah you're you're seeing a bedroom the other thing to note is the wingspans the studio and base kit opens up to seven feet wide 
but because the arms are different lengths, you can collapse them down and you can fit smaller spaces. Three feet eight inches is enough to spin around your body sitting in a chair. As for me, I'm off making my next episode. This is Josh O saying thank you very much. Stay creative and go make some art.